Ever wondered how paint sticks to a wall or how your favorite chocolate milkshake maintains its thick consistency? Welcome to the fascinating world of suspensions. No, we're not talking about hanging objects or school punishments, but rather a scientific principle that plays a pivotal role in our everyday lives. Suspensions are mixtures of two or more substances, where one is dispersed in another. Picture it as a dance, where the smaller particles twirl and sway within a larger medium, never quite settling down. These particles are larger than those found in solutions, giving suspensions their characteristic cloudy or opaque appearance. Now, you might be thinking, suspensions, where? Well, you'd be surprised to know that they are everywhere. From the orange juice you had for breakfast, to the paint on your walls, the ink in your pen, and even some of the medicines in your cabinet, suspensions are an integral part of our world. Consider your favorite chocolate milkshake. It's a suspension of tiny cocoa particles in milk. Or think about paint. It's a suspension of pigment particles in a liquid. Without the principle of suspension, the pigment would sink to the bottom and your paint would be colorless. In the pharmaceutical world, suspensions are key in the creation of many medicines. For instance, some drugs are not easily soluble in water, but they can be suspended in a liquid to be effectively delivered to the body. Cosmetics, too, often rely on suspensions. The glitter in your favorite nail polish or the tiny beads in your exfoliating cream all exist thanks to suspensions. In essence, suspensions are a balancing act, a dance that delicately holds together our world in ways we often overlook. They help create products that are integral to our lives, achieving effects that would not be possible otherwise. So it seems we're surrounded by suspensions, doesn't it? From the food we consume, the products we use, to the medicines we take, suspensions are indeed a world within droplets. Stay tuned as we dive deeper into this captivating world in our next segment. Now that we know what suspensions are, let's delve into the different types that exist. Just like a world within droplets, there's a universe within suspensions. And within this universe, there are two major types that we commonly encounter, flocculated and deflocculated suspensions. Let's start with flocculated suspensions. The term flocculated might sound like a character from a sci-fi movie, but surprisingly, it's all about science and less about fiction. In a flocculated suspension, particles come together to form loose, reversible clusters known as flocks. These clusters are held together by weak van der Waals forces, which are quite the social butterflies of the molecular world, enabling particles to stick together. The beauty of this type is that although particles group together, they don't settle out thanks to the repulsion between the flocks. Think of it like a gathering of friends who come together but maintain their personal space. Moving on to deflocculated suspensions, these are the lone wolves of the suspension world. In a deflocculated suspension, particles prefer their individuality and do not form flocks. Each particle remains separate from the others, moving freely within the liquid medium. But, much like the unruly crowd at a concert, the particles in deflocculated suspensions can settle out over time, leading to a hard, cake-like sediment at the bottom. Taking a closer look, we find that both flocculated and deflocculated suspensions have their unique characteristics and applications. Flocculated suspensions find their place in pharmaceuticals, where the quick and easy redispersion of particles is key. On the other hand, deflocculated suspensions are preferred in paints and coatings, where a smooth, uniform application is desired. Just like the array of characters we encounter in our daily lives, each type of suspension has its unique characteristics and applications, making them versatile in various fields. Whether it's the social gathering of flocculated suspensions or the solitary nature of deflocculated suspensions, the world of suspensions never ceases to amaze. Ever thought about what keeps these suspensions stable? It's a balancing act, really. Understanding the stability of suspensions is like understanding the secret sauce that makes the entire dish delicious. In the case of suspensions, it's the difference between a successful delivery of medication or a failed one. Stability in suspensions is all about maintaining a uniform distribution of particles throughout the liquid medium. If the particles settle or clump together, the suspension's effectiveness can be compromised. So what are the key factors that contribute to this stability? First up, we have particle size. Generally, smaller particles stay suspended longer than larger ones. That's because gravity has less influence on tiny particles, so they resist settling. 
This concept is crucial in pharmacy, where the goal is often to create suspensions with particles small enough to stay evenly distributed, but large enough to carry the necessary dosage of medication. Next, we step into the world of electrical charges with the zeta potential. This is the electrical potential at the interface between the dispersion medium and the stationary layer of fluid attached to the dispersed particle. High zeta potential means there's a strong repulsion between particles, preventing them from clumping together, and hence maintaining the stability of the suspension. But there's a catch. Too high a zeta potential can also cause instability by leading to the formation of smaller, more stable particles that are difficult to redisperse. So, it's essential to strike a balance, ensuring the zeta potential is high enough to prevent clumping, but not so high that it causes other issues. So, as you see, stability in suspensions is indeed a balancing act. It's about finding the sweet spot between particle size and zeta potential, where the particles neither settle nor clump ensuring the suspension's effectiveness. It's a delicate dance of science that plays out in the realm of tiny particles and droplets. So, stability plays a crucial role in the performance of a suspension, and getting it right can mean the difference between a successful treatment and a wasted effort. What if I told you there are unsung heroes that help in maintaining these suspensions? Yes, we're talking about suspending agents, the unsung heroes of the world of suspensions. These agents are substances added to a suspension to enhance its stability. They work tirelessly behind the scenes to ensure that the suspended particles don't settle down quickly and that the dispersion medium and the particles stay in harmony. So how do these agents achieve this feat? Well, they increase the viscosity of the medium. Imagine trying to run in water and then trying to run in honey. It's harder in honey, right? That's because honey is more viscous. Similarly, when the viscosity of the dispersion medium is increased, the suspended particles find it more difficult to settle down, ensuring the stability of the suspension. Now, let's introduce some of these heroes. Xanthan gum, for instance, is a popular suspending agent. It's a polysaccharide secreted by a bacterium called Xanthomonas campestris. This gum is widely used in the food and pharmaceutical industries due to its high viscosity and stability even under various temperature and pH conditions. Another example is bentonite, a type of clay mineral. It's often used in suspensions containing poorly wettable solids due to its excellent swelling properties. When it comes in contact with water, bentonite swells, increasing the viscosity of the medium and thus improving the stability of the suspension. Then we have tragacanth, a natural gum obtained from the dried sap of several species of Middle Eastern legumes. This gum acts as a thickening agent, increasing the viscosity of the dispersion medium, making it an excellent suspending agent. These are just a few examples. There are numerous other suspending agents, each with their own unique properties and applications, but they all share a common goal. To keep our suspension stable, they are the unsung heroes that ensure our suspensions function as they should, often without us even realizing their existence. Without suspending agents, our suspensions wouldn't be quite the same. Suspensions are not always as simple as they seem. As we dive deeper into the world of suspensions, we encounter some intriguing variations. Let's start with suspensions containing poorly wettable solids. These are tricky because the solid particles tend to clump together and separate from the liquid. The trick here is to use surfactants, which reduce the surface tension and help the solid particles disperse evenly. Next we have suspensions of precipitate forming liquids. These are liquids that, when mixed, form a solid precipitate. The challenge is to maintain the suspension before the precipitate fully forms. This requires a delicate balance of the right conditions and ingredients. Then there are dry suspensions meant for reconstitution. These are often used in pharmaceuticals where the active ingredient is suspended in a dry, stable form and then reconstituted with a liquid when needed. These special suspensions add a whole new level of complexity to the world of suspensions. They remind us that even in the smallest droplet, there's a fascinating world of science waiting to be explored. How do we measure the quality of a suspension? Well, it's not as simple as just looking at it. Evaluating suspensions involves a detailed analysis of various parameters. Let's dive into that. First up is particle size. The size of the particles in a suspension can greatly impact its stability and overall performance. 
Therefore, particle size analysis is a crucial step in the evaluation process. Next, we have viscosity. Viscosity refers to the thickness or stickiness of a suspension. A high viscosity can help maintain the dispersion of particles, preventing them from settling too quickly. Last but not least, we consider the sedimentation rate. This measures how fast the particles settle when the suspension is left undisturbed. A lower sedimentation rate indicates a more stable suspension. Through these evaluations, we can better understand the behavior and stability of suspensions and make necessary adjustments to improve their effectiveness. Evaluation helps ensure that our suspensions are up to the mark 